Well, good afternoon, everyone. We're here at nice and sunny, but bitterly cold, Wooden Lakes in North Yorkshire. We're on the Kestrel Lake, and we're here with this handsome chappy, Browning's Adam Richards, and we're looking at his skimmer approach, fish with pellets and a little bit of ground bait. It's fair to say you're doing it a bit different, Adam, aren't you? So let's have a little look. Yeah, I mean, that's my pot. No cup and kit, no anything. That's the lid off a fruit shoot drink. Yeah. And I'll put all my feed in through that throughout the day. Uh, which, if people are fishing for maybe F1s or something like that, you see a lot of that, but not for skimmers, where your general approach is get a bed of bait in, top up as and when needed, try and get lots of fish settled in your peg. But I just find by fishing the way I do, when they're in my peg, I can catch them so fast. There's times when you lower your float in, it'll go straight under, mm. and you've got one on. And it's so. worth saying here, you know, there's a lot of skimmers in this lake. Yes, it is, yeah. So they're almost in front of you anyway. Yeah, there's loads and loads it's in It's not like you're trying to pull them into your peg, is it? No. So I've got my, my fishery micros there. That's probably enough to last me all winter. Yeah. Uh, soaked right up, very, very soft and blown up as much as I can, which makes them, because I'm feeding very, very few of them, it makes them really visible on the bottom. Fish can come in and pick them out. Yeah. So... That's really important. They're so soft, you, like you say, you could almost put them on the hook. Yeah, you could, yeah. And then I've got good old faithful black swim stim. Yeah. A uh, favourite of both of us. A favourite of both of ours we've used since... We were kids. Yeah, since we were <laughs> kids, basically. Now, it's really important that it is black swim stim. I have tried others, they're not as good. Because for the way I fish, I need it to be really sticky. It's like a sort of semi-wet paste, not dripping off the hook type paste, but it'd be very soft and holds together very well. Uh, so it'll go to the bottom in one lump and it'll stay there, it'll drag any fish down to the bottom that are in front of you anyway. And because it isn't breaking down, the fish can't eat it all in one go. So it tends to hold fish for a while and you can catch little runs of fish without having to refeed. Yeah. So if I just show you how much I'm actually feeding. Because when you told me about this feature that we're gonna to do today, I did think it was exaggerating. I thought it says two pellets, but it's gonna mean no, 10 or 15 pellets, because that seems like hardly any. Yeah. But you have actually been feeding. Yeah, two, two or three micros, yeah. hardly anything. To be honest, I'm not convinced the micros actually are what draw the fish in. I think that's the ground bait. Yeah, but it's more... The, the pellets, are, it gives them something they can eat, first of all. And it also gives them a taste of something similar to what's on my hook, because yep. I'll be fishing an expander pellet on the hook. And then I'll take my little bit of ground bait... Hardly any. Push that in. Right in the half of the pot. Down the side of my pole tip, which is important why I use this type of pot. Your pole goes through it, it gives you some weight and wedge it in. Yeah. Now, it needs to be able to stay in the pot. I'll demonstrate why yeah. just in a minute. So we just got a little four by fourteen. Rigwise, four by fourteen secret, which is quite heavy for the depth of water really, but yeah. it allows me to have a bit of shot down the line which shows the bites up really well on these still type of days of really, well, they can be hand-sized skimmers up to a pound and a bit, maybe. Shy biting fish. Because it's got a thin hollow, a thin solid tip, not hollow, my shots really react on it as well. So my last dropper pulls basically my full bristle down, meaning it magnifies everything that's happening. I can really see my bites well. So it's all about showing the bites up. But rather than have a bulk right near the hook, I still like a bulk and a couple of droppers. You've got a bit of a fall. So I can flick my rig out, it'll come through the water, and then I can lower the last bit in. Right, so nice little expander on the hook, very similar to my feed pellets, slightly bigger, three mil sort of size. It's a good match, though, isn't it? Yeah, good match, yeah. yeah. And especially because I'm only feeding a few, it's something else they can pick out. So, Adam has literally, you know, we've been fishing for quite a while now, but that is the most he's fed all day. And um, that's how much you fed at the start as well, it's worth saying. And, and you caught a carp, didn't you? Caught a carp first cast, yeah, which I think fishing this way always gives you a chance. Of catching a carp, you're not putting too much bait in that you're going to spook them out with your peg. Which can happen in the winter. Yeah, exactly, which is why bomb and single hook baits are so successful. Let's lower it in nice and slow, right over the top of my bait. Ducks are in a bit of a... Now, this is why it's important the ground bait stays in my pot down the side of the pole tip. It allows me now to wait for a bite without tapping that bait in or worrying it's going to bounce out. And I will always try and get a bite straight away without feeding. Sometimes you can catch a run of two, three, four, and not have to feed and catch them really quick. So obviously this is something you've got to balance out because you do need to feed at some point. Yes, yeah. So you can't just keep going with just your hook bait, but 
you, you you like to give it a chance to get one first, don't you? Yeah, try, that try and catch one quick. I might give it first. Like you've got one there. Like that, look. And I'm not fed a thing there. Nice, clean, positive bite. Yeah. And I feel like when you've got a lot of bait in your peg in the traditional way, you can't catch them that quick. And I've had them a lot quicker than that today, as soon as my rig settled. And it's worth saying, you know, you've caught, even as early as like October time, when the weather's still mild, you still fish this way, but yeah. just closer in. and Yeah, a bit closer in. I might feed a slightly bigger ball, maybe the size of a pea. But the same but sort of still, thinking. Still very little. <laughs> Try to feed every three, four, five fish. And it just allows me to catch them really, really quickly. Nice fish. Yeah, the average in here is sort of six, eight ounce, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lovely fish, isn't it? Yeah. Real weight building stamp. Especially if you can go in four or five casts in a row and get one as quick as that, you've yeah. probably caught three pound in... No time at all. No time at all. Typical for the cameras, the hook's gone straight through it and got stuck in the net. Well. Yeah. Nice fish though. Lovely fish, yeah. So you just had that real nice skimmer. Yeah. And the bait is still in the pot. The bait's still in my pot. So it hasn't come out. So that gives me a chance to do the exact same thing again. I'll go in, flick my rig out past the pole so it falls through the last sort of 18 inches of the water. Hold the last four or five inches out and lower it in really slow, try and let it catch a fish's attention. And then you get that little dink. Yeah, because there's not a lot of bait in the peg, if you can catch one's attention, you'll generally catch it really quickly. But it's just so different how, you know, the textbooks tell you to feed skimmers and bream and stuff like that but these commercials are totally different especially like this one you know it's it's a not it's a mature lake now very silty there's a lot of fish a lot of skimmers in here a lot of small skimmers and it does need a different approach doesn't it yeah definitely and the other thing is obviously you can you could fish like this in a silver fish match but when carp count it's especially good because you're always giving yourself that chance of catching some carp um, so I'll go in now, I'll try the same again, hopefully I can get a bite. If not, I'll just turn my pole over, tap my bait in. Now there's a couple of things that happen. You'll either, you won't get a bite, so you need to feed, or you get some strange indications and you can't quite hit them. And that's normally another good sign to feed because you just need to pull the fish down to the bottom. Do you think they just come up off the bottom? Just start, yeah, moving around the peg. And if you don't feed the bait, that's a prime time for them to disappear out your peg because there's probably nothing left by that point. So I haven't had a bite now, it's been 30, 40 seconds. I might just try and give it... Oh, there you go. I've got one. <laughs> so again, no feed. No bite. I did wait a little while for that one, so probably next time I'll go in, give it 15 or 20 seconds, and if I don't get one then, I'll then tap my bait in and just try and focus the fish back in the area where I want to catch them. Quickly they're using, obviously, number five elastic. Yeah, that's it, number five uh, C-neck solid elastic. People use light hollows and that type of thing when carp count, but for me, solid elastic's always the way nice forward fish when it's as well for that. Beautiful. Nicely done. That's a proper one. Lovely fish. So that is a good stamp for this lake. Yeah, I mean, that's. You get days when a lot of your fish are that size, but normally, if you're going to have a really good day, you catch smaller fish. When you're on a peg with not so many, you catch them and they will be a bit bigger. Out of him. Are you fishing nice and light, like a little up, 09 up length? Oh, yeah, 09 up length. Uh, I don't fish that small a hook. Uh, I tend to try and get away with an 18 F1 pellet. Yeah. Uh, just because I don't feel you miss as many bites. And I also think you don't pull out with quite as many fish. That one's never coming out. That one was never coming out. It's twisted round somehow. There we go, we've got him. But, yeah, Beautiful. Lovely way to catch them. So we'll just quickly see if we can catch one more off Just there. see, bait's yep. still in my pot, yeah, still haven't fed it. Two fish. But it just goes to show, you know, the rule book. You know, there is days when obviously potting some bait in and leaving it, and yeah, some venues where that works, but... Especially on deeper venues, but what I would say on them venues where it does work, I would still always start off fishing like this on another line, mm. because your line that you've fed positive can take a while to get going. This, this is can be, you could get one first cast. Sometimes it might not, but it's definitely a great way to start off. So you're fishing at 14 and a half, 
Yeah, with, 14 and a half metres. It's jealous Joe time. You're fishing with a spear at 14 and a half. I thought you were fishing at 13 because when I had a go, could, uh, as always, I just sit there thinking how good is that pole. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's very impressive. And I've had it sort of just over two years now and I still get that feeling every time I use it, just how good it is. I mean, sometimes I'm away at work for three weeks and don't get a chance to go fishing. So it sort of reminds me again when I pick it up. Perfect for this sort of fishing, especially where you're little tiny indications and you're lifting at them and yeah, constantly it, lifting and dropping your rig. The top pole like this really helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, because I've waited a while for that last fish and I've gone back in and waited 20, 30 seconds, not had a bite, I'll just look at, knock them a little bit of bait in again. And there it is, you just see it. <laughs> you can barely see there. it. <laughs> and hopefully that'll pull the fish back into my peg and get one settled down so I can catch it again and then hopefully lead to another two or three fish without feeding. One thing about woodlands, I've never seen so many birds in all my life. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of birds, which is surprising because there's a lot of cats about that you would think. Of. But look at them, they're at, Adam's very nicely put a tub of maggots on his barrel behind, look, and the blue tits and the great tits and the robins and the wrens are all having a feast back there. The other thing I'd say is, if you think your floats move, pick up, because I don't know how many times today it's sort of half moved. I thought, is the one on? Lift up nice and slow, and you can feel one, and you just pick up into it. If there's not one on, you just lower your float back down, and often, if you, it's been an indication of a fish, you'll get another bite straight away. It is uncanny, actually, because some bites, and I've seen this when I've been out with Des ship before, he strikes at bites that a lot of people don't even really think about and it might just be like the float moving across the surface and stuff yeah something's just not quite right yeah and just, that has happened a lot today hasn't it yeah and it, it does with these skimmers and the f1s are the same as well and so if you can pick your float up as much as i just have there if there's not one on it's it's not been an excessive movement to spook anything and you can just lower it back in again and i'd rather pick up two times when it hasn't been a bite and the third time i do it there is a fish on than ignore them all and not catch it in an ideal world. Yeah. But you could see then I just sort of oh. go up his come off. Well, I think what you've demonstrated has worked well. Yeah, it has, yeah. Maybe we've lost that fish on last not. one. I'm not going to hold it against you. But, you know, something to think about there, folks. Uh, really good tactics. I mean, look, just filling this pot up with nothing again. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and check out the full feature in the March issue of Match Fishing Magazine where we'll go into even more detail. Thanks for your others and we'll see you soon. Bye.